So Byron, Byron always talk about, and I ain't, you know, I ain't trying to start nothing on here. <laughs> he like to talk about women that's low maintenance low versus maintenance. high maintenance. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. So so uh -oh. I, I one one thing I will. <laughs> Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, low maintenance shit. relationships. I'm what do you mean by that, though? Because you about to piss some. <laughs> oh, this will be a clip, so right? What I realize. <laughs> What's happening? No cap. We ain't all about to get a play. Go pull up to the table. Let's go. So about two years ago, a study came out and said that 48% of black men will make about $38,000 or less within that particular lead year. And then the majority of black men will make in between 42 to about $52,000. Um, and that, that study kind of bothered me as a black man. I remember making that kind of money as a youth pastor and, and working at Taco Bell and stuff like that. But then I've, since then, I've excelled. And I was like, yo, wait. There has to be other black men <laughs> who are out here winning, who are building wealth, eliminating debt, starting businesses, and doing some great things within our culture. And I said, you know what? Let me call my guys who I met a while back, almost two years ago now, um, and I see what they're doing. And watch this. Not only are they winning within their own personal financial lives, uh, but they're winning in a relationship life, and they're winning by helping other men and women uh, win when it comes to money. So I call my, my, my guys to the table, uh, but before I get to them, I wanna thank today's sponsor, Better Help. They are sponsoring this amazing show today. I believe it's gonna be one of the best shows we've ever had, because when you can get black men to the table, I'm for my black brothers. But you know what? Um, I remember that time I was going through my um, separation from my ex fiance and I remember asking my dad, I wish there was a manual uh, to how to properly separate and get back into life. But you know what? <clears throat> there is something that may not be a manual, but there is a, a such thing that can help you through the transition, and that is therapy. And that's my friends over there at BetterHelp. Unfortunately, life doesn't come with a user manual. So when it's not working for you, it's normal and, it's, and it feels like life just sucks, right? But navigating any of our life changes and life circumstances can make you feel unsure, whether it's a career change, a new relationship, um, or becoming a parent. And therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause and the challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills and how to adapt and adjust and move forward. So listen, BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient and accessible anywhere, 100% online. I personally see them two times a month myself from right here in my office so whether or not uh, you've been in therapy personally um, I really want you to really understand that there are some huge benefits to doing it all you gotta do is go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash better help again that is anthonyoneal.com forward slash better help because as the world's leading therapy services better help has matched over 3 million people you could be one of them all you gotta do is just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with the therapist and things will get to going from there. So again, go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash better help. Also, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button. Okay. Subscribe. Stop dating your boy. I mean, I think I'm, I think I look halfway decent. You know what I'm saying? And I think I have some good information going on from the show. Actually, better yet, I have some good information. Subscribe. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, hey, thank you so much. Make sure that you share this podcast. And here's the last thing before we get into my brothers. Um, you guys, I will never, ever, hear me clearly, I will never, ever ask you for any money on YouTube. These are fake comments. These are bots. These are scammers that in the YouTube comments saying, hey, text me on this WhatsApp number. I'm in America. I could just give you my cell phone number if I really wanted to, but I'm not because half of y'all crazy. I'm just playing. <laughs> but listen, if you see comments in there, please look for the check mark. If you look for the check mark, that's myself or my team. If you see it's something with the WhatsApp number or say, hey, email me here, do this, that's not me. Always look for the table with AO check mark from YouTube. If you don't see a check mark, that's not me. Yo! <laughs> yeah. What's up? I don't know what to call y'all now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because when I first met y'all two years ago, it's been about two years now. Yeah. Y'all were B.O.B. Yeah. Business over breakfast on Clubhouse. Yes, sir. Sure. And y'all had one of the top rooms Still. every morning. Still. Still. Consistency. Well, y'all yeah. don't do it every morning anymore, though. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But before, y'all was doing it every Monday, morning. Monday, Wednesday. Yeah. Monday through Friday. Yeah. That's true. 7 a.m. Central Time. No. 6 a.m. Central. 6 a.m. Central, 7 a.m. Eastern. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm curious because business over breakfast, for, for my people who are just now listening, they no longer go by that. I'll let them introduce their new name. But the reason why I love these guys is because every single morning, 
Uh, you all were talking about business during breakfast hours, anything around money, real estate. Um, I even bought up relationship stuff, but oh, yeah. anything that was about moving the community forward financially. Yes. Yeah. Um, or if it was preventing us from moving forward financially, you all talked about it. Absolutely. I'm curious. Did y'all know each other before Clubhouse? Yeah, we did. We did. We weren't as close as we are now, but we knew each other before. For real. So what made y'all want to start that that journey? It, you know, I think it was selfishly motivated. <laughs> it was. It was. I think we wanted to learn more about each other's businesses. Mm, you know yeah. what I mean? We all kind of was in the real estate space. And I think, you know, it was it started out kind of like a mastermind, you know, we, a mastermind amongst us. And that mastermind amongst us brought on a, a audience and we were bringing in the Probably the biggest audience in the morning. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And as a result of that, it was like, okay, well, shit, I guess we got something here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So for the people watching, how about you introduce yourself, tell your name, where you're from, um, and what do y'all do differently in the career space? Gotcha, you go gotcha. Ahead. Okay. Yeah, uh, so my name is Byron, real estate investor out of Houston, Texas. Primarily focus on the wholesale space, also do a little bit of creative finance, uh, new construction, fix and flip, new to the build to rent space. Mm. Mm. And I'm excited about it. Wait, 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 say that one more time. <laughs> new to the build to rent space. New to the build to rent? Build to rent, yeah. Build, build to rent. Build, build a house lose. and rent it. And renting it out. Yeah. Wow. And it's a beautiful play. It's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful it's place. Amazing What's the money place. looking like in that place? It's amazing money. You know, it, it, I would say what the wealth is looking like in this play. Mm. So I'm, everything that I'm building, I'm pretty much, you know, I'm doubling up pretty much on equity and wealth every time I build. Okay, we're going to talk about that. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> Let's run that play back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on, man? Keith Everett, real estate diddy. Been in real estate, what, almost seven years now. Yeah. Doing a lot of wholesaling, fixing and flipping. I'm at a point now, I'm just looking to turn to active income. It's a passive income. Ooh. Also, a uh, sales guru. I love to teach on sales. Yeah. Um, you know, I got my own, you know, mentorships and stuff like that. But you got primary wholesaling. You know, the last what ten days, I done made like a hundred thousand just, just flipping paper basically. Wait, wait, wait. You saying the last ten days? Ten days. Yeah, last ten days. Wait, wait, wait. You mean like one, two, three, four, five, six? Yeah. Wholesaling. Ten. Ten days. Wholesaling. Oh, oh, you yeah. never moved into the home. Just never, never even paid, purchased never, the home. I've never even, I didn't bring no money out of my pocket. I'm talking all profit. And you made $100,000. All profit. All profit. Yeah. And you said, and he never owned a home. Never. Never seen it. Never saw the home. No gross, all that. <laughs> it's a different situation right here. <laughs> yeah. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that, baby. <laughs> Talk to us. O'Neill Parker, real estate investor, entrepreneur out of Lafayette, Louisiana. I've been in real estate since 2016. Built my first house when I was 21. Wow. Had my first kid when I was 20. And I'm um, vertically integrated in the real estate space. So what that means is I'm, I have a wholesaling company. I do fix and flip. I own a construction company, a title company, property management, credit repair, business credit. The whole nine when it comes to real estate. And uh, my overall goal is to buy as much passive income as possible. So I've been buying houses since I was 23. Three, mm -hmm. bought 13 houses my first year, uh, got into business credit my first year. Uh, started my business with $63, wow. turned that into 2,000 in three weeks, 50,000 in four months, 182,000 my first year. While having a kid and a full-time job. So what? that's what I do. So we got black men at the table who, who, who have built something and you're continuing to build something. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> have y'all actually asked yourself what's y'all net worth between just y'all three? We, we didn't. Yeah, we, we haven't. Didn't. We didn't. We, we didn't. didn't. That's a great question. Yeah, that's a great, let's just do that. We did do we something on our way here, though. What's that? We were seeing how much money we didn't, you know, all made the other days? last 30 days. It was about 300000 300000 Last 30 days. $300,000 yeah. within the last 30 between you three. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. $300,000. 300000 Yep. Between y'all three. Yes, sir. In less than one month. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Let me, let me, let's, 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 let's start, let's start here. This is a, this is a different circle right here, man. <laughs> <laughs> I bought 18 houses last month. 18 houses? That you saw? Yeah, I saw some of them. I saw all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where, where did the drive come for y'all in, in the very beginning? Do y'all come from money? Do y'all come from parents who was in a real estate game? Do y'all come from wealth? Me a little bit. Uh... I grew up in the hood. My dad, he was kind of like, you know, you. No debt, no mm -hmm. credit cards, nothing like that. Yeah. So he always poured into me that 
I need to build wealth. I need to get life insurance, stay away from credit cards, save your money. So I watched him. He was always an entrepreneur. My grandpa was always an entrepreneur. My grandpa owned a cement company making 10000 a week wow. in the 90s. Uh, my dad never had a job. <laughs> In the 90s, making uh, in the 90s. a week? Yes, sir. Oh, he was rich with yeah, 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 yeah. In the 90s? In the 90s. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, man. my father never had a job, always worked for himself. He was the only African American man on a building in our downtown area. He sold it last year, so I grew up around apartment buildings, I grew up around bank buildings, I grew up around a lot of real estate. So, I was always intrigued of how all these people are making money, who's actually making money. Somebody's living in here, so things like that. So, that's how I grew up. I uh, had an entrepreneurship all in my blood. So. Mm. I became an entrepreneur myself. You have, did you ever get a job job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I quit my job when I was, what, 19 days after I turned 27? Okay. So I leveraged my job to where I am now. Because I always tell people, you don't have to quit your job. Right, right. You know, leverage your job because having a job is the most important part. You can get money from the banks. Yeah. Banks love people who have W-2, same check every two weeks. Banks don't like entrepreneurs. We all know that. Yeah. So leverage your job until you're making way more money than you was making at your job and then become a full-time entrepreneur. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah, so um, my thing was uh, I grew up poor, mm. but I grew up with good parents. Yeah, yeah. And uh, real good, <clears throat> some people, but just were not financially literate at all. Mm. I had one of the moms that would, um, you know, if we if we made twenty thirty thousand as a household, mm -hmm. we was gonna spend thirty five thousand mm. as a household. Yeah, sound like mine. And so as a result of that, we, you know, but my mom always had good credit, always paid bills on time, always took care of business, mm -hmm. but we were never in a position to have any abundance around us. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, Anthony, it drove me to never want to be in that situation ever again in my life. You know, it's funny, when I finished nursing school, right, um, I started doing travel nursing. And I was, you know, at my height, I was living off of 30% of my income. I was saving 70. Come on. So, so I had well into the six figures saved up mm -hmm. um, just doing travel nursing um, because it was just one of those things. Once I made that decision to not want to live that kind of lifestyle, I was just like, you know, if I just got to live, you know, you know, you know, off the basics, I'm just going to do that. You know what I mean? And I, and I did, that's what I did before I got into real estate. Wow. Mm. Daddy, talk to us. Man, listen, man. I grew up, um, you know, tough neighborhoods. Um, you know, my mom and dad. I had a they had a healthy co-parenting relationship, right? My mom always worked two jobs. You know, we you know we was always on Section A, food stamps. You know, you know at the time I didn't really think too much about it because I just thought that's just the way it was. Right. You know, my dad he was a street entrepreneur. We gonna we gonna call him a street entrepreneur. My whole life, you know what I mean. Towards the end when I was getting out of high school. That's when he kind of slowed down, caught the case and all that. And uh, I actually moved to Alabama in 2009, you know, went to college, worked at factories, worked at City Trends. And uh, I was always been that type of guy, you know, with a chip on my shoulder because no other entrepreneur is really in my family like that. Wow. I'm, I'm the first one to do everything, but I don't use that as an excuse to, you know, break the generational curse. Like, I can stop right now and I'm a, I'm a legend in my family. Yeah. But I want to drive it all the way across the line so that way that everybody else can be like, you know what? I got to I got to do what Uncle Keith do or I got to do what you know Diddy do or whatever. So, wow. yeah. Do, do y'all think we in the black culture as men, black men, lack education to be successful like y'all? I don't think we lack it. We just it's not attractive to us. It's starting to get more attractive cuz the rappers are talking about it. We look up to the the wrong people. Yeah. You know, everything we listen to, everybody we see, everybody that has money, that we have access to sell drugs, yeah. play sports, yeah. are rappers. Yeah. So that's all we know, but good thing is, a lot of rappers are starting to transition into entrepreneurs. So as you can see, like Rick Ross is starting to hang out with yep. Grant Cardone. Mm -hmm. Rick Ross is starting to hang out with him 500. Mm -hmm. So they starting to see that, so now they're trying to tap into what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, in the pandemic, rappers weren't making the money. Right. They couldn't perform. Right. So they had to do a transition. So yeah. I think we have access to the information, it's just not attractive as it was, but now it's starting to turn. I gotta keep it real. I think culturally, you know, culturally, man, we've been, you know, trained on how to kill each other. Mm, mm, we've yeah. been trained on how to disrespect our women. Mm, we've been trained on strong. how to uh, hurt <coughs> each other. Ooh. That's what we've been trained culturally to, you know, aspire to, respectfully. 
And I think, you know, if you've been trained that and indoctrinated with that over time, bro, you you is you know, even me, I grew up thinking that, that will, will, that's what's up. Mm. And so mm. I had to kind of like get into books to kind of like detox my thinking. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it was it was through books that I feel like was 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 my gateway mm -hmm. to uh new levels of success. Mm -hmm. Sure. I think I've always made money. I made money as a youngin, but I made money the wrong way as a youngin. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so now I'm making money, you know, in a way where I ain't got to look over my shoulder. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I think that you know, as far as the culture, I think we so in love with getting rich and not wealthy. Mm. I think that right there has been hurting us and it still hurts us to this day. Because most of the rappers, like you said, I mean, Rick Ross, you got guys like that. They're starting to push the wealth. But at the same time, it's just, you know, nobody want to get wealthy. Everybody in love with the things you can see. Flashy. Everybody want to brag on the things you can see. When it comes to wealth, it's invisible. Yeah. So once we get in love with the things that and taking care of the things that you can't see. Yeah. Then I think that the culture will move forward. I was just saying that on my show um, the other week uh, that um, the reason why I got into debt and the reason why I don't do debt outside of real estate, which is why I'm like, all right, cool. I'm gonna have this conversation with Grant Cardone. He been he's been ready to get on my show, uh, but y'all was like, dang, how am I had this conversation with Grant? You know what I'm saying? But now, I, 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 as I have evolved. I have said, you know what? Uh, debt, when it comes to getting into real estate, I'm all for it. Mm. But now, getting into debt. We happy you turned the corner, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said real estate, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't that's it. That's, that's it. You know that's it. it. That's I'm it. with that, too, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, real estate. Absolutely. I'm with it. I'm with that. You know, some people may be like, oh, Anthony, but you know, wait, wait, hold on. We're talking about Anthony O'Neill. You know, yeah. Anthony O'Neill. I'm, I'm with that, though. With real estate. I'm with know, that. Especially within the black community. Uh, because when the black community, we're not going to be having just, you know, a million, two million, three million dollars just sitting aside uh, to go buy, pay cash for real estate. Mm. You know? But yeah. I do believe, you know, which I do. I see y'all teaching it. You still got to be wise on how much real estate you even get to make sure that you can handle it. Right. But it's like, man, I, I, I feel as if y'all are right. Like culture never even taught us how to even properly build wealth. I, I remember culture taught me get a credit card, go get the twenty twos on the wheels. Max out Shoot. the credit card. Here we go. Max it out. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, go ahead and get the free money first purse because it's free money, mm. and you only got to pay back thirty dollars a month. Mm. But you got all this stuff. And then when I woke up and I looked up at the bill, I'm twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars in debt. I'm like, wait, what? What just happened? And then when I was really into the credit score, my credit score was low because I had maxed out. But yeah. no one said, like, yo, you need to keep your stuff if you're going to do the credit route below this amount. But yeah. I'm banking all the payments on top. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, man, I wish Jay-Z would have been talking about wealth when he was hove back in his younger days. But now he's talking about it. Yeah. Right. Now people want to listen. Now right. we see your Rick Rosses with the uh, Grant Cardones, the Snoop Dogs now with the Grant Cardones. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, we're, we're seeing these rappers now starting to really get more so into the business side of things. But man, I'm like, still, we still got a lot of work to do. A lot of work. Yeah. We're just in the beginning. And I think yeah. it's going to be guys like us yeah. who make. Who make a lot of people say, well, why, Anthony, why'd you buy the Bentley? I said, because I wanted to show this younger generation, number one, I wanted a Bentley. Mm -hmm. You know, number two, I also want to show the younger people, you don't have to be a rapper, an athlete, or a superstar right. to have what you desire. Mm -hmm. right? You know what I'm saying? You can be debt free, consumer debt free, yeah. and drive the real nice cars. That's true. Live right. in a real nice house. You can be black and be a businessman, not mm -hmm. be drowning in debt. And I didn't have to rob, steal, or be stingy with my information right. to get it. Right. I can go and have that stuff. And it's like, man, I one thing I love about y'all, because sometimes I'll come in y'all room just to listen um, in between while I'm working, because you all are dropping information. Right. And it's and man, I've learned a couple of things uh from you all. I was like, man, I, I need to run that play. Okay, well, I, oh wait, whoa, 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 I need to run that play. Cause even with me being a money guy, I can still learn money moves. Right. And, and I really do appreciate what y'all are doing. But in the past, I went by business over breakfast. Correct. Mm -hmm. But y'all know, no longer are going by that. What y'all going by now? 
No stingy. No stingy. No stingy. No stingy. What, what, what? No, that's what all this gear is. Before we before, get, yeah, yeah, before we get to that. I'm just saying yeah. to y'all. Yeah, point. yeah, yeah. We man, we, for you. Hold up. Oh, yeah. Oh. No stingy. Yeah. Energy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We got your yeah. hoodie. Exclusive. Hold up. Y'all know exclusive. I like hoodies. Exclusive. I'm saying, oh, hey. hold up. I'm about to get nope. butt naked on this. All right. Oh, hold up. Yeah. Oh, oh, hold up. Yeah. 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 Y'all, yeah. y'all. You're the first one in history to put that on. We never even put it on yet. We ain't put that on. Oh, hold on, bro. Hold up. New joint. Hold up. Hold up. That's that right. fresh off the press, World right? Yeah. Premier. It smells fresh off the press, too. Yeah. And World it's fitting me right. It's showing my guns, too. Yeah. That's, That's it. it. That's it. I need my hair. I need my brush now to no stingy energy. That's yeah. it. You know and we got saying? that real exclusive for oh, you, yeah. man. Well, hold on. What's right here? We stop. only got four of these right here, man. Four of these? Yeah. And you got the four one, man. Yeah. Nope. Tag this is the only four we got right here. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> no stingy energy. For y- those of y'all listening on podcasts, they just gave me some merchandise. And so if y'all see me walking around with no stingy energy, it ain't mine, but I'm showing up rocking it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Are y'all selling this stuff, bro? So we think about selling it. What y'all think? Black Friday? Black, Black Friday, Friday or something, man. Bro, Let yeah. it loose. Let but it loose one time. The What's the message behind no stingy energy, though? It's a great question. I think I know it, but I'm like... What's y'all's message behind it? So, so it, you know, back in the day, right, you would always hear about people making money, doing nice things. Mm-hmm. Even in our culture, you everywhere. hear about... Yeah, everywhere. You hear about, uh, you know, you hear about people making big money, but nobody ever told you how to make the money. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, now it's like, yo, like, you know, we just kind of felt like that was a little corny. Mm. And it was like, yo, like, if I know something, right... I'm gonna share something, and you know it's it's it's, it's you know culture it goes back to culture. I study the Hasidic Jewish community, mm. and what I realized, man, they had like a high mm. level of trust in this community. Yeah, mm. to the point to where they don't even have to uh, sign off on. They don't loans need documents. They don't even need documents. Handshakes. They do handshake loans, and I say, man, how can we ever, as a black community, get to a space to where we can have high levels of trust amongst each other? The only way, man, is we have to lead with a give. And so No Stingy Energy uh, was birthed from that particular space and understanding. Wow. It kind of reminded me of uh, the verse in power, uh, Proverbs, right? Yeah. It say, you know, if your brother needs something, don't wait to give it to him tomorrow if you got it today. Yeah. And what I mean by that is this. Hey, yo, if you ask me, you know, hey, man, how do you get into this real estate game, knowing that I know but I don't want to tell you or act like I don't know. You feel it in your heart. Mm. You feel that energy right there that you could have gave and you chose not to. And that's why we wanted to create no stingy energy because if you ask me something I know, it's going to get his brother some help. Here to give you as everything. long as you're willing to help yourself, you know, we're willing to help you. I mean, you know what, though? <clears throat> Let's be honest. I don't, I don't think that's, and I love what y'all are doing because that's true. But in the black community, we got stingy energy. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Very it's horrible. You know what I'm saying? We oh. got stingy, and we 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 don't want to see nobody else come up. We don't want to see nobody come up, even in the spaces that we're in. Exactly. It's like ah oh, no 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 no, I, I can't help you out because you're gonna take my people. And I'm like, man, there's three the world is huge. Thirty-one million people in the U.S. alone. Everybody got customers. You, you can't serve everybody. Exactly. Man. I can't serve everybody. Yeah. Oh. You get you get you a good two thousand people, you can make a million dollars. Easy. Yeah. Easy. That's no. That's not even one percent of three hundred and thirty-one million. Nah. Facts. So it's like what y'all's brand is known as now. No stingy energy is epic. Appreciate that. It, it, it is brilliant. It is smart because I think within our community, what y'all are showing is like, yo, all of y'all are in the same field. Yeah. yeah. But y'all helping yeah. each other. Y'all made three hundred thousand dollars together as as three in one month. Yeah. Like people don't make that in five years. Facts. Mm. Yeah. But if you can get the information with each other, if y'all can work together, yo, how'd you run that play? Okay, cool, let me do the same play. Yo, I, while I was running your play, I learned this as well. You need to go back and run that on your next play. Facts. That's, and that's what we're they doing. doing it. They're that's doing that right do. now. Who yeah. doing that? Y'all too? Yeah. All the time. So wait, so let's talk about that. So y'all, you're in wholesaling. Yes. So break down wholesaling when it comes to real estate. Because I'm wanting to get into real estate, yes. which is why I want y'all to come into this show and teach me something. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm like, all right, cool. I got the money. Yeah. So I'm like, how do, I, how, do I, how do I run the play? You know, wholesaling, you know, at its foundational piece is just me literally blocking your property up under contract. Okay. Taking that contract and finding somebody who's willing to buy that contract. That's, That's simple. You don't even need money. Don't need money. I just need a mouthpiece okay. and the ability to convince you 
that I am the buyer for this property, and then I go and find me somebody that's willing to buy that particular contract that I just got from you. So are we talking about uh, pro- I mean, like personal homes or anything? Talking- anything. So how do I, as the buyer, benefit from that then? Because will I lose money? So what we do, we target people that need to sell, not want to sell. Right. Got you. So we're not shopping on MLS. We shopping people that's going through divorce, foreclosures. probate, foreclosures, Tired all those situations. Tired yeah, landlords, an 80-year-old man have 100 houses, he's tired of being in the business. That's my that's my custom. Got you. That's like this. Like if O'Neal, he just lost his job, right? <coughs> mm-hmm. O'Neal house worth $100,000. Mm-hmm. He lost his job. The house got leaks in the ceiling. You know, he ain't changed out the kitchen in five years. So O'Neal ended up selling me the house for fifty thousand. Okay. Need to get rid I of take it. a piece of paper, purchase and sell agreement. Okay. Put O'Neal's house that's worth a hundred thousand. Get in a contract for fifty thousand. My guy Byron right here. He been on the market looking for houses, getting his head busted, paying too high. But now since this is an off market deal, I sell the house to Byron for seventy thousand. <sighs> And I take the 20 in between, and now Byron got him a house with equity. He didn't have to, you know, bid, do a bidding war on the market. Okay. He get his 100000 I get on the contract for fifty. I make me 20000 and now Byron and find him a new flipper rental. That's so everybody I'm win. just selling Byron a piece of paper that I got in contract with O'Neill. That's it. Okay, wait, wait. My math is off. Yeah, you did. You said a hundred thousand. Yeah, you I, get, said, I get fifty thousand. Yeah. Okay, okay. I was about to yeah, say. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry it's about fifty, yeah. twenty, and he yeah, pays everything. Yeah, he pays exactly. the seventy. So, it, and then that deal only works out if you do not owe a hundred thousand on the house. So you got to exactly. find out how much the mortgage is. Yes. Yes. How much the house is worth. Okay. And you want to get it as low as possible. Okay. Still ser- serving their issue, serving their problem. Because right. what we do is we try to figure out what the issue is okay. and how much you need to move forward to bigger and better things. I got you. Mm. So if you're 50, you only need 5,000 to move to your apartment, then I'm going to give you 55. Mm. The goal is to, for you to solve the problem that they have. Solve the problem they have. Get rid of the house. Give them enough money to get into the next situation. Right, exactly. Boom. Right. You uh, pocket it's a win-win situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's uh-huh. winning. That person ain't out here stranded no more. Exactly. Right? You know what I'm yep. saying? You took you took a burden off of them. Yes. You gave them enough uh, enough to start the next journey. Yes. yes. Sir. You made twenty grand based upon their yep. need and helping them out. The investor yep. got a house. And with investor equity. got a house with thirty grand of equity in exactly. house. Exactly. Exactly. It's a win win situation, and that's what we do. So we're helping people and making money at the same time. And these are not the people who are like us who don't need it. I mean, who don't. So we five to seven percent of the market. Yeah. Yeah, how y'all finding these people? Man, so multiple ways. ways. Multiple Where ways. you want to start? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we can find people all kind of ways. We can pull lists. If you uh, certain zip codes, we can do uh, the last time you bought the house, how much equity you have in the house, when you bought the house. We can do uh, everybody got divorced in the last thirty days. It's, it's multiple ways. Yeah. It really it depends violation. on what you're looking for. Yeah. The deal Diddy just did sixty five thousand. Sixty five thousand Diddy? Yeah, that was like a uh, what? Last in two seven days? Seven, seven days total? Well, from, seventeen. Seventeen, 17 days. from start to finish. Start okay, to finish. wait, wait, wait. Diddy, talk to me from the start. <laughs> yeah, because I'm about to come to Huntsville. Yeah. Got that going. So, so it was so man. Believe it or not, this was the easiest deal I completed all year. Easy. Sellers was Usually no Usually the big ones are the easiest. Yeah, the bigger the deal, the more easier the deal. It's like the tiny deals when you get the most problems. So all I did was this. I went to Google. I typed in Huntsville Unsafe Buildings. It brought me to a screen. I could put search. I hit search. It showed me all the code violations in the city. I seen the latest one, which was like uh, September the 23rd. It was a property. Mm-hmm. I took that lead, the homeowner's name, the homeowner's property. I went to skipgenie.com. I skip traced this person, got their phone number. I sent it to one of my acquisition managers, gave them a call. They locked up a deal for twenty-five thousand. Well, the seller originally wanted fifty. The seller actually went over to the house and seen it. They said, "Nah, they negotiated themselves." They said twenty-five thousand. We took the property, got in the contract on that piece of paper for twenty-five thousand. My partner, he found a cash in investor for ninety thousand. We made sixty-five. Seventeen days. <laughs> Never came out of my pocket for what no money. What was wrong with the house? Cold. Violation. It was cold violation, roof leaking, no, but it's uh, not livable. no electricity. It's not livable. Not livable. So as an investor, like if I was to be the investor, all right, cool, let me get that house for 90 yep. grand. I pay you 90 grand yep. cash. Yep. Then I put like another 100 grand into getting the house up to code. Probably, then, not, probably about probably about 34, about 40. 40 grand to yep. get up to code. So yep. I'm, I'm a buck 
30 into the house. Yep. And now, what's the play for me as an investor? Do I rent, rent it or do it, I sell it? You can rent it. You can do the bird strategy. Yeah. Or you can sell it. Or house what work. I like to do, I like to become the bank on my houses. So mm -hmm. I have no liability and I take, I get a down payment, 10 to 15,000, I make 500 a month. Something break, don't call me. And what's so cold, the beautiful thing about it, oh, is that seller, they had to sell it because that property was most likely going to get condemned anyway. Absolutely. So for them to be able to get the 20 grand. They won. They won. Because they would, if the city would have condemned it and would have took, you know, uh, destroyed it, they would have probably had, they would have had that money to come out of, they would have owed that money later. It would have been a lien. It would have been a lien. You know why I like the code violation list? It's because... If you got, if the city is after you for not having your property up the code, not just renovated, but up the code to yeah, live in, got no money. that means you don't have no money to fix it up. To the, you waited to the point where it's not even livable no more. So guess what? I'm going to come in and help you out. Still give you some money for it, even though you don't have to fix it up. And then either I could keep it or I could just, you know, sell it just like I did. It's that simple. So let's say someone got 50 grand right now. Yeah. What's the best move to make? Leverage it. Leverage it. Leverage that to more money. Yeah. Get into a new deal. I would, you know, it's funny, man. Um, you know, in real estate, if you understand how to get properties, like how we've learned, how to get properties at 20 cents, 30 cents, 50 cents on a dollar, mm -hmm. and you understand <coughs> how banks, uh, you know, view somebody with 50 grand in, in, a, in, a, in a, you know, in a bank account, you could not spend that money. Right. Mm -hmm. Have the money mm -hmm. and take that property to the bank and then walk away with money to buy the property. Right. To actually teach people how to get in real estate. You understand what I'm saying? Not using your money. Not using yeah. your money. Because if you got 50,000, you know, it's unfair, but the bank is going to look at you as a safer person to, to give that, that asset to. Mm -hmm. So not only are you not going to use the 50, mm -hmm. but you're going to walk away with maybe 10, 15, 20 grand in your pocket. So here's my biggest concern about like teaching a method, right? Is I think people will hear this and they'll have, let's say, ten grand in the bank and they'll go and borrow all try and borrow all this money to to get these properties when they really don't have the income to support all the properties. Mm. That's been that's been my biggest hang up, right? It's like I agree with getting rental properties. I agree with making sure that, you know, we, we get, because that is wealth building. Right. But my biggest fear is you have this young man out here, 20, 20 years old, borrowing, you know, a half a million to a million dollars to go out there and get into real estate, but he's only making $28,000 a year. Ooh, so that's why, that's why we like, you know, like wholesaling, because you get a lot of active income coming in. So if you do start getting like rental properties, guess what? No matter if something comes up where you got to repair it or whatever, you still got this active income that you need to be investing in passive assets anyway. Okay. So I would advise anybody, especially if you're young, mm -hmm. figure out that that active income stream. You know that we can you know make an economy in bulk. Okay. And then turn that over to the passive income. Okay. And then you know it can support each other. So you really got to focus build, on bring, build in the money. Yeah, make some money. You got to focus on slow money, medium money, forever money. Oh. Mm. Fast money is wholesaling. Okay. And let's talk about wholesaling. You just did that, right? That's, yes. that's the situation. That's, that's the situation said. right there. Absolutely. All right, cool. The medium money is like a hotel deal. You get it. We buy a house, yep. wholesale, mm -hmm. put maybe tw two thousand to ten thousand in it, sell it retail. Okay. So that situation, put under contract for twenty thousand. I put ten thousand in it, paint the outside, put new floors. Now I'm put on the market for a hundred thousand. Wow. All within a month. Wow. And then you got the forever money, which is the rentals. So if you focus on all three, you never have an issue. Never have an issue. And rentals, you know, you know, even somebody who got a good solid nine to five, right? Rentals aren't the problem. The problem is people buy rentals wrong. Mm. Talk about it. So if Talk you buy it. a rental, right, at 90 cents on the dollar, you buying it wrong. In most mm. cases, mm. we teach people how to get properties at 50 cents on a dollar, 30 cents on a dollar. When you learn that strategy we, and you can employ some of the wholesale tactics to get these properties, now you're in a situation where not only are you not all the time having to come out of pocket, right, but you're getting money to buy the property. Mm -hmm. right. That's the power. Mm -hmm. And then you take that money, you set that to the side and leverage that to get even more property. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, you, you now you're in a, in, a, in a stronger position. And then another thing, too, is 
it's strength in numbers when it comes to, to real estate ownership. Mm -hmm. You can't tiptoe and pick up two or three. You need to have 10, 10 15, 20. That's yeah. the safety. Yeah, that's the safety. <laughs> that's the safety. You know what I mean? 10 or 20 rental properties. Absolutely. Or if more, or more. The more you get the more, more the safe, better. the more you have. Because then it goes right. by a percentage. So if you only got one, it's vacant. Mm. It's a liability at that point. If you got 120 vacant, only 20% is vacant. Or if you got a, mm. like a, a four unit, let's say you got your nice little four unit, right? If you only got one house, guess what? The roof mess up. You got to pay just to get one roof fixed. Mm. You got a four unit, you're just still paying to get one roof fixed. Yeah, and yeah. you still cash flowing more. Still cash flowing more. Yeah. yeah. So the goal is to start slow, then get medium, then go forever. Facts. Finding a deal the right way. That's the number Finding one the thing. Deal Finding the right deal the right way. way. Yeah. That's the number one thing. So if I want to get into the, which I am, I'm already in a rental space, but if I want to get into it brand new right right now, what's the number one thing y'all would tell me, Anthony O'Neill, to do? Learn how to analyze a deal. Yeah. Educate yourself on how to analyze a deal. And when you say analyze a deal, what kind of deal am I looking at? A rental deal? You're anything. Like, anything. Flip, rental, a burr if you want to do that. Just You got to figure out. Where you want to go, why you getting into real estate, mm -hmm. study that, and learn how to analyze that deal. I'm getting into real estate because I want real estate and I want to create some income legacy down the road. So, like, for me, when I look at a rental for me, I'm not looking for income today. I'm looking for income tomorrow for my kids. Yeah. Gotcha. So, like, I'm not looking for, like, the rent today. I'm not trying to make a lot of money today. Yeah. Gotcha. I'm looking for, like, hey, down the road, this is income for, for my kids. Mm. Yeah, I would just buy with equity, too. You know, that's, some, that's my advice I give people yeah. all the time. Any deal you ever buy, you know, make sure you already got some equity already. Okay. Because you already going, you know, you're going to catch that appreciation just by holding it. Mm -hmm. So if you start off with equity and then it start appreciating, that's a nasty deal right there. So now, do y'all recommend, like, when you buy some old, like, for the house that you just bought, do y'all recommend people go in there and, like, put the best of the best inside of it? Hell no. That's why you got to look at the comps. What's right. selling in the neighborhood? What they got? They got uh, granite countertops or they got... Tile squares is the kind of tops. If they sell at a hundred thousand with the tile squares, and you just got it at thirty, why the hell am I put granite? Right. <laughs> Most people lose money because they fall in love. Yeah. Like I ain't gonna lie, I didn't lost money falling in love with the renovation like it was my house. Exactly. I started thinking it was no. my house, mm -hmm. end up making nothing. What? It's so not an emotional game, man. It's all exactly. about numbers. You just so you just do what the comp is saying. That's to it. You. That's it. That's it. This dances to the test. And another thing is, if you're going to get in this game, you got to see where your money can go the longest. And is the state or city you're in landlord friendly? Because you don't want to go to New York where it's tenant friendly. It takes six months to a year to kick somebody out. That's you want to go to Houston. Yeah. You want to go to Louisiana. Because I can kick somebody out in seven days. You out. In seven days. You out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I cut those movies, you know? <laughs> if, I, if I give you a, a notice on Monday, next Tuesday is court. Next Tuesday is court? That's it. Do y'all know what it is in DMV? I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> I don't know. We can figure it out. They though. got the president here. They yeah. might need some time. Yeah, need some yeah time. That, but that's something you really want to look at because people don't even think about that. Yeah. Wow. You got to think about the end. Dude. I'm you got to look at the cash flow. Like if I, if I have 40000 to spend, where could I spend this forty and make the most money? Right. On this forty. On the forty. Mm -hmm. That's it. But try to get into what I use in your own money. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Another thing I was just thinking about, you know, you said you had like 50 grand, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say that, you know, I had a property, right? And I might have a lender that wanted to lend me some money, but they only willing to lend me 80% of the money. Mm -hmm. You may say, you know, I might need, you know, 20% of 100,000, which is 20. You invest 20. Mm -hmm. Let's say that we have a note for a year. And you make ten to twelve percent on your, you know, on your money. Yeah, I might get it done in three months, though. You know what I mean? Or I might do it in a year. But guess what? You just making money while you ain't doing nothing, just by putting your money to work. Mm. That's one of the easiest ways to get into real estate as well. Or mm. just like Byron, he got some units he about to build. You may want to be a, a silent investor in his deal or something like that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So without you having to have to physically do the repairs and spend a lot of time, you can just invest with somebody who already got something going on. So you about to, you about to do that now? Oh yeah. You looking yeah. for silent investors? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I get returned in thirty to, I mean, ninety to one hundred twenty days. 10 What's to your return? So with this, it's different though. It's this, developing. Okay. this is an equity play. So I'm, yeah. I'm looking for equity partners. So okay. you will be a partner in the deal. So okay. you know, uh, we have a ninety six unit we're looking to build. Okay. Um, that's going to be a massive apartment complex. Yeah. Um, and we're looking for partners. So you will be part owner 
in this asset. Um, yeah. And whatever you invest will be will represent your ownership stake in that particular asset. But then, you, for what I understand, the difference between his and O'Neill's and yours is yours is more long term equity play. Absolutely, if, if that's you ownership sell it. and ownership. It's ownership. Right. His is more return like a loan. on your money. Return yeah. on his your money. is more like a loan. Mine is like you no, know, you are owner of this apartment complex. You mm. know what I mean? So passive. passive, passive. His could be you know his play. He's saying three months can be um, a fix and flip. It could be a hotel, or he may be doing the bird. Yeah. You know what I mean? He may be buying the property. He may have a private lender, you know, that's lending him, you know, some money, right? Mm -hmm. O'Neill, what he could do is, and let's say you had invest 20%. Let's say I fixed the property up. I purchased it. I fixed it up. I rented the property out. And then what I did was I refied on it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. pulled, up, pulled, pulled the money back, paid you off. Mm -hmm. Now, O'Neill, guess what? He got a rental property for, for free. 100%. For free. I ain't, he got it I ain't got no money into it. He got it for free. You got your return on your investment. Mm. See, this this is what is what is all about, man. And uh, I, I want I want I want to thank our second sponsor for today's video before we get back into the show because I want to flip this and talk to three successful men here about about ladies. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> about ladies, you know, but I want to thank Prize Pool for joining on and helping us bring you all good content, great content, and sponsoring today's show. Uh, they are the leading uh, online bank right now when it comes to high yielded savings accounts. So if you're looking to save for emergencies or save to buy property, uh, you go ahead and part that money into this Prize Pool account um, and you'll be able to pull it out when you're ready to put down your 20% for your property or 20% for an investment property. Um, uh, but at the same time, what I love about them, not only going to get a high yield on your returns, but on average, you get about 3% of your return with this particular bank because it's going to give you your guaranteed interest. Plus, for just parking your money there, you get tickets. Those tickets go towards grand prizes. Those grand prizes are anywhere between $100,000 to $25,000 a month. And so all you do is just park your money there, have at least $500 in that savings account, and watch your money just grow. So go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash savings. Open up your checking account, checking account today. Not your checking account, your savings account today. Put the money in there and watch you make some money off of your own stuff. So again, thank you, Prizeful, for partnering with us. And don't forget about my other friends over at BetterHelp. Make sure you all getting some therapy uh, because between BetterHelp and Prizeful, I'm able to bring you all this amazing content. Thank you all for partnering with us. Um, so y'all got a bag. You, you're married, right, Daddy? Yeah, one year. One yep. year, and you're engaged. When yes, you when, Next year, 2023, you're getting married? January. January. It's right around the corner. That's it, man. How long are you with, with your lady? How long oh, have you man, 14 years. 14, oof, Jesus, that's mm -hmm. a good woman, We can talk about it. We can talk about it. That's a good woman, dog. We can get into it. Oh, no, that's a good woman, dog. Great woman. <laughs> I can tell you why, though. I can tell you why, though. You know oh, Byron, you just got engaged. Just got engaged. I mean, when y'all getting married? Uh, next year. Next uh, year? Yeah, next year around June. March. June? Okay, yeah, cool, June. cool. And how long y'all been together? Oh, man, like eight years. <laughs> oh, you got a good woman, too? I got, no. <laughs> I mean, we got yeah. great women. Yeah, yeah y'all got amazing women. women. Amazing yeah. women. Yeah. Diddy, you, how long you been married? Uh, one year. Uh, how long you with her before you got married? 12 years. God! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I can tell you why mine been so long. Yeah, yeah let's man. talk about it, man. Let's... All y'all dating black ladies. Of course. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Where? What? Yes. Why? Why? Fourteen years, man. I've we we got together years. when I was a sophomore in high school. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And I've been told I'm different. I'm not just getting married to get married. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I I wanted to be wealthy before I got married. I wasn't trying to get married and figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then okay. when I was 21, I built my first house. Okay. I had my first kid at 20. So my first, and when I built my first house, because I wanted to be a father that's in the life of my kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we moved into the house on my daughter's first birthday. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I'm trying to build my company. So after that, I started real estate. Okay. I'm focused on my business. Right, right. Right? Right. And then when I was 23, I had my second kid. Okay. And then I bought my second house. So you moved the family into the second to house? To another house. Mm -hmm. I still own the first one. I didn't mm -hmm. get rid of it. Mm hmm and then my third kid, <laughs> so I got three kids. <laughs> and my third kid at 26, in the middle of the pandemic, and I quit my job like eight months later. <sighs> so all my kids got a special place with a story, but I always been focused on building wealth. Mm. And I told my lady, 
we gotta have we gotta make sacrifices until we're thirty. We both twenty nine now, about to get married. So okay. now we're here. Gotcha. So I shared with her the vision I had. Okay. For us. Right, right. Like we made goals, I think, in two when well, I was like nineteen in church. Okay. Mm. Every goal been checked off the box except getting married, and that's about to get checked off the box. Wow. Mm. So you gotta give it a lady that understand. you can share that understand your goals, understand your vision. Yeah. And it's long term, it's not short term. Now I gotta ask you this question over there. Let me hear. Let me hear. <laughs> oh, did she ever be like, "Yo, when?" Come on, you know. Come on, you know. Black yeah. women do that. That's yeah. what I said. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> did she ever be like, "Yo, I can't do this"? Yeah, for sure. Did she ever leave you? No. She never left you though. No. She never. If, left. if you could go back, would you make it shorter than fourteen years? Mm. Probably not. You wouldn't. It all happened for a reason, man. Did it? Would you go back? Man, you know what? And I, I wasn't ready either. See, I wasn't ready. But you were living with her though. I was. Let's but I still, was, I still wasn't ready though. <laughs> you were living with her. Let's keep it a buck. <laughs> you were getting some every night. Let's keep it a buck. Hey. Hey. kids. I guess I could have changed it. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's be real. Yeah. You was doing everything. But I'll be honest though. To do. I'll be honest though. She wanted to have a wedding. Of course, a wedding costs. I'm not about to spend money on a wedding. I'd rather spend money on a house. <laughs> to bring in more income for the family. Yeah. Boy. You know what I'm saying? Boy, you, I look at it. comments like, uh, so like <laughs> out over a wet. I'll be honest. <laughs> Let's look at it for real, though. A wet night dinner there is a liability. <laughs> it is, though. Yo, Diddy better <laughs> say, O'Neal, <laughs> shut up, bro. You gotta keep it real, though. Let's be honest. <laughs> but, yeah, but, yeah, my gosh, yeah, 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 Let's yeah, be honest, yeah, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Does the uh, wedding bring you money? It knows Let's that, be honest. That's the, the, so, how much you dropping for the wedding? I think like 25. It ain't crazy. 2500 25000 Oh. Okay. Yeah, it ain't crazy. All right. Yeah, you did good. But guess what? Right now. <laughs> I mean, I was about to say, 14 years later? Yeah, about 25. He better drop some, yeah. he better drop some money. He dropped way more than me. Yeah. How much you drop on your wedding? 115000 You are good. <laughs> $115. Cash. Please tell me you pay cash. Cash. Yeah. No credit. That's it. None of my credit either. Real estate. You yeah. paid $115,000 I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't what I like. I didn't mean to. It didn't what, 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 what was the budget starting out at? 50. <laughs> 50. <laughs> Mine was what 10. What took I was it scared over? of 50. Yeah. What took it over? Man, I mean... <laughs> Things cost more than what I thought. And, and when you hear 115, fact. you think I did like some extravagant type of stuff. Man, you better for 115. <laughs> Man, the Bro, flowers. Bro, you bought a house. You in a housing business. The flowers. And I'm not. I'm not the flowers? 30. Thousand. No. Yeah, real These flowers. Flowers. Yeah, flowers. flowers. That oh, died point. two days ago. Listen, listen. Now the, you see what I'm saying? The, the, the videographer guy, shout out to Stan Lowe, <laughs> he did uh, Damian Lillard's wedding the week before mine. Uh huh. He done done Draymond Green's wedding. Yeah. The Marcus cousin. So I decided I want him. <laughs> because I like this work. What? <laughs> but I feel like, but hold on though. Let's let's do this. How much you, you drop him? <laughs> you asked the question though. I did it because, for one, me and my lady, you know, me and my wife, we got one of them Love Jones type of stories. We didn't meet on social media. So I got a chance to experience how the, the old days used to be where you, you really got to get to know somebody. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got a chance to be, we was, man, I'm talking about we best of friends when we first started. No rush. We never talked about being in a relationship. We really just went with the flow. That's my. That was my friend. She was always, you know, there for me. That ain't just the reason why I'm still with her. But we just understood each other yeah, yeah. down to the T. We met when she was 18. <clears throat> I'm 19. She 30. I'm 31. We watched each other grow up. So I just enjoy just being with her and just growing up with her. Mm. So that's the reason why I did it because I feel like she deserved it. She wasn't really pressing on it. But, you know, I want to definitely give her something nice, though. You know what I mean? CJ, how much you charge me to do my wedding? <laughs> 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 he better not come at me and hey, bro, it's going to be about 25 grand. <laughs> nah, nah, the photographer, was, the photographer was like. That's him right there, too. What you mean? 75 or something like Ooh. that. 75 what? Honey? Yeah, it was something like that. I mean, that. I would have that. I'm going to give Alex $75 an hour. Hey, I got to show you the pictures, though. When you see it... I got some dope people on my team. <laughs> <laughs> not I'm no selling my, I'm using my team. Yeah, Smart yeah, man. Yeah, but yeah. I'm not... I will say this, though, and I want to get back to his point. I'm not proud, you know, that I spent that much because, like he said, I could think of so many different investments Bruh. that I can spend on this 15 on. I could have been an equity pro partner. Bro. I could have... I could. You know what I mean? It's a lot of stuff I could have did. Let me ask you this question, though. Yeah. I don't want to get you no trouble because you married. Yeah. 
do you think your wife regrets the one fifteen, or do you, she be like, ah, uh, he'll make it up? Put it like this: I think that <laughs> I think that she, I think so. I think she would have rather for us at this point where her mindset at. I yeah. think she would have thought more investments mm. at this point than just going crazy like that. Mm. You know what I mean? I got you. Yeah, mine too. Yeah. Well, how much you about to drop? Man, mine probably gonna be about different. twenty. Twenty. Yeah, I'm gonna probably drop about twenty. Yeah. So you're going Smart. to average. So the average wedding in America is gonna be in between eighteen and twenty five thousand yeah, dollars. That's, that's my girl. My, my lady don't want to spend no money. So you want to spend the money? Nah, it ain't uh, even that. It's just she yeah. just. It, it, here's the thing. This is another thing too. I waited until. So me and my girl got a, a friendship. Mm. We like homies. Mm. You understand what I'm Straight. saying? Um, and so her mindset has shifted to the point to where it's like, I'm not getting married to to impress other people. Right, mm. right, right. Like, this is about what I want. Right. And what I want may not cost 30, 40, 50,000. Right, right, right. What I want may only cost me 10, 15,000. Right, right, right. And so what I said was, look, I just want you to do what you feel will make you happy, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then you just let me know what the bill is and we figure it out. That's Boss what I did too. That's, That's right what there. I did too. And so, and so I just told her, do what you want to do. Mm. And since I told her that, it's like she more worried about being conservative with the spin um, than I than I am. And the reason why is because our mindset has shifted. Again, we friends, we talk, we 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 on the same page. My 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 lady not reckless. You understand what I'm saying? So she thinking like, yo, okay, well, um, I don't want to spend a whole bunch of money on something for other folk. If I'm going to spend it, it's going to be for my own personal pleasure. And I love that. So Byron, Byron always talk about, and I ain't, you know, I ain't trying to start nothing on here. <laughs> he like to talk about women that's low maintenance versus maintenance. high maintenance. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so uh -oh. I, I, one, one thing uh -oh. I was <laughs> Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, low maintenance shit. relationships. I'm what do you mean by that, though? Because you about to piss some. Oh, this will be a clip, so right? What I realized, <laughs> what I realized oh, you know, is that you got some women that's high maintenance, and you got some women that's low maintenance. And if you mess around and get you a high maintenance woman, and you a high caliber guy, right, that high maintenance woman going to run you into the ground with the best intentions. Mmm. Mm. So what I realized, I'd rather have me a low maintenance woman. And when I'm talking about low maintenance, I'm talking about you don't need all of my attention mm. to feel like One. we normal. Mm. You don't need to just draw up, you know, drama and stir up confusion just so you can feel normal. You don't need to spend a ridiculous amount of money on goofy stuff for you to feel Secure in who you are and 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 what you represent and what we <coughs> represent as a couple. So I like people that's that's down to earth, real humble spirits that 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 it's are with that can self entertain mm. that can self entertain because I don't have all of the time mm. to devote to a relationship like that. So I'm what, just keeping it real. What what is a high maintenance woman though? I'm explaining. I could explain it. <laughs> <Ooh. to you. laughs> Jesus, <laughs> like you said. <laughs> Some highway uh, maintenance women, uh -huh. they'll help you spend your money, and then they'll call you broke. And they ain't gonna help Ooh. you get the money. They ain't gonna help you get the money. <laughs> they'll help you spend that money, mm -hmm. not help you get no more money, and then they're gonna call you broke. Ooh. So, that was part of my relationship, too. What? My lady had to grow. Oh. So she started off as a high maintenance and then evolved into a low maintenance woman, basically. No, nah, she's still by midway. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it real, man. Oh, keep it real, man. You know what I'm saying? Oh, but like Lord. I said, for the wedding, I was like, man, you know, it's a celebration for us. This is what y'all wanted. But technically, your your wife sound a little bit low maintenance compared to Diddy's, though. She sound like a high maintenance yeah. woman. Diddy high maintenance too, though. Diddy high maintenance. Oh. <laughs> but but but, but, but he, he, he probably more but, high maintenance than Diddy. Yeah. I done got way better though. <laughs> I done got way better. You know what my problem is? Is that you know one of my guys told me. When I was in high school, listen, if you're going to do it, you need to do it all the way. Mm. But I, I feel that like philosophy. that. I do too, though. <laughs> Me too. That's not a good philosophy. No. Because you know what I realized, though? Just because you got the money to spend like that don't mean you're supposed to spend it. But let me tell you, man. All y'all spending more money than I have. Mm. Mm. Not half. 
<laughs> Correct. All y'all spending more money than I will spend yeah. on a wedding. Wow. Mm. What's so what, what's your what, wedding budget look like? Yeah. Mine was ten thousand. Ten thousand dollars. Yeah, we blew that quick. Yeah. Mine was ten thousand. Because my philosophy is this: <clears throat> I got the money. I could, I could, I could do. You know, I do a hundred thousand. My thing is like, and like, why? So my ring now, her ring is gonna be a bag. Oh yeah, yeah. Understandable. The yeah. ring is gonna be like wow. Because that ring, when she steps out and she's getting her nails done, step up, that represents me. Absolutely. What kind so of man you are? Ring, exactly. The mm. ring is gonna be like, bow. Yeah. The wedding, man. Listen, I hope I find me a woman that understands and partners and uh, we align together. We will have a decent wedding with the family, with family and friends who genuinely want to see us win, who mm. will pray over us, who will really wish us the best, and mm. we don't have to spend a whole lot of money for that gathering. The honeymoon? Oh, we gonna spend. Yeah, that. absolutely. That's what so I was you spend say. on stuff that <laughs> matter. Yes, that's, that's how I am. Say. You know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't yeah. small. Matter. You know what I'm 65 saying? Sixty-five people, family, friends. That's Bro, it. My uh, my boy and his wife, Keon Henderson and Shawnee. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, Shawnee yeah. O'Neal now is Shawnee Henderson. Bro, they didn't spend a bag like that. And, and they, they got paid. They got small, paid too. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? The producer. And how they TV smart. show went out there too. Exactly. So mm. they they were smart in their whole wedding thing. Yeah. Small group of just intimate people. You know, people who truly love them want to see them win. Right. They turned it into a smart deal to share their love story clearly on the producers, so they're getting paid for it. Right. So it didn't cost them nothing. And then now it's like, yo, they look back at it. They had a great experience. It didn't cost them a bag. Now her ring is fat. My boy Keon, Keon. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yes, sir. Um. So like for me, I'm like, yo, how can I run that same play? So when I hear people saying, oh, da 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 on the, on, on, the, on the wedding, I'm like, damn. Yeah, it's goofy. You know, so, it's funny. The bigger the wedding. The bigger the, the crowd of people that's just gonna be there talking crap about you, anyway. exactly. The bro. food ain't good. The food ain't the food good. Ain't good. The dude he should have really did like this. Us. He should have yeah, that. You see her hair. hair. You know how many different opinions I had that didn't spend nothing, uh, bro. Bro, everybody counting my pot. That's and the only thing happened. The bigger the wedding, <laughs> the, the more opinions. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you this: too. at my wedding, love you, mama. My mamas ain't got nothing to say about this wedding. Mm. Yeah. Mm. They, they're not. They, I'm, my it's mother's. Not their wedding. It's not. It's not their wedding. I'm gonna let my future wife tell me what you want within our budget. Yeah. Don't okay. listen to my mothers. <laughs> yeah. When, what you should do this, mom, what you should do is sit down. Respectfully. <laughs> yeah. Respectfully. <laughs> I like that right there. Fire it. You know what I'm saying? Respectfully. <laughs> yeah. Sit down and enjoy this moment. Absolutely. Because I watched my mom get inside of my sister's wedding and it was a it, it was raise the budget. Yeah, yeah it was budget. a little situation. Mm-hmm. And my brother was like, yo, wait, hold up. Mm-hmm. Pause. <laughs> this is our wedding. And so, like, man. But I got to find that woman that's going to lie with me, though. Because, boy, I'm trying to tell you. It'll be hard, so, man. This dating thing right here for single people, it's hard out here. Well, you know, it's a mindset thing. That's the reason why I think our dating phase was so long. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because you got to understand, when you, our culture, bro, mm-hmm. it's culture. Mm. Just like how I said how black men are trained. We're trained. On how to kill each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're trained on how to be reckless spenders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're trained on how to not treat women respectfully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our women are trained to be independent. Mm, mm. Our women are trained to take his money. Mm. Our women are trained on how to not value a man. Mm. That's, I mean, this is in our culture. Culturally, <coughs> we're trained this way. So... For me, it took a while, right, you know, for me to build with my lady, mm. to change a lot of that toxic cultural training that we've been indoctrinated That's it. with. Mm. <clears throat> I'm with that. So let me y'all ask, let me ask y'all this. My question. lady had to grow a little bit. Y'all two engaged, one married. So y'all got y'all's ones. I talked about this with R.C. Blake, and the ladies just went in, right, and and... I saw this, I met this chick, beautiful chick, beautiful chick. I mean, she was beautiful. Yeah. Mm. She was bad. You miss her? No. Oh. <laughs> I just had to ask. But I do miss seeing the beauty. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Because she was beautiful. And I told her up front, probably within like the first, O'Neal, first week of meeting her, you know, she was talking about she about to go out, chill out with, you know, the ladies. I said, well, all right, tell them other niggas. <laughs> yeah. I'm coming for you. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? She got an attitude, and she was like, yo, wait, why would you even say that? You know, like, why are you worried about them? I'm curious. First time telling y'all this, 
as men, when another man says, tell them other niggas, I'm coming for you. What do y'all think I meant as men? 100% confidence. Confidence. I'm not worried about nobody else. I ain't worried about nobody else. You don't have to worry about nobody else. Come, matter come of fact, I'm here. I'm yeah. serious about my pursuit for you. That's it. I think she looked at it the wrong way. I looked at it like this. I looked at it as you wasn't worried about them, but they better be worried about you. Absolutely. Ooh, that's how I look at it. Absolutely. I ain't worried about them, but just tell them. I'm here. They don't want to wait, though. Absolutely. They might want to get out of the way. So <laughs> what was your meanings about it? That right there. Okay. Yeah. okay. But she called me controlling. How? Mm -hmm. Because she was like, well, hey, it sounds like you're worried about them and you're trying to control me to just you. And I'm like, nah. Well, what I'm telling you is I'm speaking and I'm about to put actions to show you that I back what I'm saying. Mm. That's and what I got from her. Maybe she don't like confident man. Yeah. Maybe she's so controlling. She, she Maybe controlling. She, controlling. Yeah. she wanted a weaker man to control. That's what yeah. it sounds like. She don't want that confidence. Yeah. Women, women do target that, though. Absolutely. Yeah. Do they? Come on, Absolutely. Man. Absolutely. You, that's what they yeah. want. Dominant women, I don't think naturally. Because like you were saying, women are raised to be independent, so they need a weak man to control them. But, but, but we got to be honest, though. We got to keep it real with A.O. Not all women, yeah. though. A lot of men like that too. They like women. They like weak ladies. Yeah. yeah. Nah, nah, nah. I don't like that. Nah, I'm with you on that part. That ain't yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. I, 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 that ain't me. I, I want a woman that I could be. Uh, transparent with honor and honor, but it's like I, I need her to honor and to respect me. Mm, right. Both ways. And she right. will be the prize and she will be lifted up and cherished and honored as well and respected as well. But I was like, man, as we're closing the show, let me, let me end it with this. Do y'all think a woman saying never tell a man, never tell a woman that you're intentional about dating is a good thing? So like if I'm intentional about dating for marriage, should I tell a woman that or not tell a woman that? Can I be honest? Yeah. The honest version, I would say, is no. Can't mm. be honest. Why not? I think the way the dating culture is set up right now is that, you know, it'll come across <coughs> as too strong. Mm. Right? It'll probably run off mm. some potential women. Mm. Um, and I also think that you know, it, it, the dating culture, man, people don't really know what they want like that. And I think anytime somebody is, is strong, coming across strong like that, it could probably possibly run some folk away. Now, I want to I want to I want to I want to pivot. Now, if you're looking for a woman that you, you know, that you want to let her know that you're taking her serious and you're looking to run her off if she's not willing to, you know, to take you serious, then that's a good approach. God, God. I, I said take a little time. <clears throat> Take a little time. Yeah, date each other a little yeah. bit. See, that's even what you yeah, want see, before yeah, you even yeah, say before, that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. y'all can go on two days and be like, I ain't wasting my time going on the third date. So they yeah. ain't got to waste the energy even saying that. Mm -hmm. I think women more in love when, even if that's your attentions, I think they more in love with showing that's where you're going to take it. Mm -hmm. Instead of telling her. Instead of telling because her. Because most of the times at a certain stage of our life, I mean, we all, well, what, you almost 30, we all pretty mm -hmm. much are 30 plus. At that point, they'd have been told that too many times. Ooh. How many times has they been showed that? Mm. It ain't been that many because she wouldn't be talking to you. That's real. You know I mean? That's real. Damn. That's real. I met a young lady and she was like, she dates multiple men because when she was just focused on dating one man, all of them said, yo, I'm coming for you. I got you. I got you. And, and she never did it. And she's like, so why focus on one yeah. until one shows me that that's serious? Yeah. She's like, I'm just going to date multiple. And Damn. honestly, when I when I when a woman tells me she's dating multiple men, I hate to say it, I'm turned off. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. You know I'm thinking I'm, I'm thinking you having sex with all of them. Exactly. Women. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and and they more than likely they're not. But I know men. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like if we're dating you, everyone got an angle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. so let, let's just be Somebody, real. Somebody's hitting on my yeah. Yeah. Somebody Somebody's beating on the horn. Yeah. Let's, Somebody beating the cakes. We just know, don't know who it is. Let's yeah. just be real. You know, that shouldn't be the focus, but unfortunately it is. And when I hear that from other ladies in our culture, <laughs> I'm like, oh, man, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Ladies ain't going to like this, but, you know, sometimes the man might be thinking, Somebody else getting the cakes. Now you watching how you spinning the cake. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, you know. It, it all get, a lot. Yeah. 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 That's it's true. Yeah. That's true. But, but hey. at the same time, I guess I would rather know rather than not knowing. I'd rather know up front. You know I really would. Yeah. I really would. I really would. And, and it gives me the opportunity to be like, all right, cool, I'm going to do it. And I'm not. And I met this one chick. She told me that. I said, I just can't do it. I'm sorry. Whoa, I got a question, though. So if a lady tell you that, 
I'm what's your up. approach about her? Like, what, how, what's your feelings towards her? This is exactly what I told her. I said, hey, you know what? I respect that. I mean, you're a grown woman, uh, and, and I want to respect that. I said, but I'm just too good of a man to be just doing that and putting myself through that emotional stuff mm. as well. No, but I already a woman know. told you that she was serious about her husband. What about that? Oh, if a woman told me she was serious about her husband? Yeah. And she got the Bible, the booty, and the brains with love? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm taking that off the market. Oh, <laughs> fast. Off the market, fast. That's me. Fast. Ooh. Fast. If she got the Bible, if she loves God, has a relationship with God. Got her money together. Straight. You know what mm. I'm saying? Got a nice little booty on her, you know? <laughs> and she got some brains. Yeah. She she can partner with me and we can build something together, legacy. And she has true love. She has the capability of loving the authentic, real AO. Yeah. Mm. She's off the market. We get married in one year. I ain't doing y'all stuff yeah. 10, 12, 14 yeah. years. Wow. I, I can't do it. I think that uh, I give it 12 months. 12 months is a wrap. It's a wrap for yeah. AO. You know the number one. I'm 38 though too, so yeah, you little. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 for sure. Number one key for me, man. You know, for the fellas that maybe you know that might be watching, how do you know if the lady is the one, right? Mm. How do you know if the lady is the one? I think once I realized that she had unconditional love for me, mm. because in relationships. I wouldn't have been through different phases. Mm. We got that honeymoon stage when mm. everything I say is funny. Mm. You know, she blushing and all that. Then you got the stage in the relationship where everything ain't funny no more. Now mm. you're getting used to each other. Now mm. you're figuring out that I scratch my head a lot or she taking off her wig or whatever. Now you're seeing the braids. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got that phase when they getting on your nerves. <laughs> then you got that phase, right? That, just like in my relationship, I'm sure, oh. Yeah. <laughs> We gotta, we gotta keep it real though. We gotta you see them braids. Yeah. Hey, when you, you, know you, you know they love you. You know see the braids. So, so uh, after that, you got to have a kid phase where mm, you know see what type of parents well, most, she is. Most, most most men make mistakes when women have children as a whole. Mm. But most women don't educate men on the postpartum process. Mm. So now it's confusion going on in the relationship. Mm. And most people never make it. Mm. That's that phase. And then you got the phase where you make it through that and you back in love again and the butterflies back. a different type of love. You got to go through some things. Y'all yeah. really, that's where you get the unconditional love. Bro. That love different because yeah, you didn't been, been through the whole roller the coaster. Phases. Yo, listen. Uh, this is our show. We already over by six minutes. My producer is like, yo, listen, we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. Uh, yo, listen, uh, these guys are going to be on a panel with us here next month. Um, and it's just an all males panel, and I, I really want ladies to dive into this panel. What do we call it, Alex? Oh, listen, uh, ladies. ladies, let's hear him out. Oh, the name of this show and name of this series, and we call it "Ladies Hear Him Out." It will be airing here in the month of December. I mean, it just be us men just really having a conversation about stuff like that. Like, like, ladies, here's what we're thinking. Here's what we're missing. Here's what we need from you. When we say this, this is what we mean. And so, listen, make sure y'all check it out. My guys said they're going to come through and sit on the panel. Um, and ladies, y'all can only listen. And we will have ladies actually giving their thoughts um, throughout the show, let you know what they was thinking. But it's going to be a great one. Ladies, hear us out. Yes, Make sure you keep it locked. Yo, I'm going to drop all the information in today's show notes, all their Instagrams. Make sure y'all follow them. Get on Clubhouse. They're dropping some amazing content um, in the morning times. And I'm telling you right now, if y'all want to learn more about how to get into the wholesale, the real estate market, check them out. All right, you guys. It's your boy, Ayo. Appreciate you. See you in the next show. Peace out. <laughs>